Hello you guys, what is up? So for today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I stay productive, tips to stay productive, just in general things that I specifically do that help me stay productive because this was kind of requested. So I was like, you know what? That's actually a really good idea because I've struggled with productiveness in the past, but these are kind of like the tips that I've picked up along the way and what works for me. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you guys is organization. And this is honestly the top tip that I have for you guys because being organized is everything. It's gonna make the biggest difference in your productivity. To stay organized, I like to make a list of things that I need to get done and put it by priority if that makes sense. Let's say you're making a list of what you need to get done for the day, put your top priority things that need to get done at the top of the list so that you're always gonna be reading over them. And since they're at the top, you're gonna see them. So just make sure to put things that are high priority at the top of your list. Planning out your days and your weeks beforehand, I think for me is just so important because waking up in the morning, you can either make it to-do list for the next day or you can wake up in the morning and first thing, make a list of what you need to do that day. Or even if you can plan far in advance, I suggest doing kind of a rundown for your week and then you can go more into specific details kind of every single day and make like a mini to-do list every single day. A good way to plan out like your weeks is is Google Calendar. I really, really liked it. I like the flow of it. I like how you can color coordinate everything. I just really had a good experience with Google Calendar. And as for everyday to-do lists, I honestly just like writing them on my notes tab on my laptop. Sometimes I'll hand write them on a notepad. That's like a to-do list for the day. I honestly kind of go back and forth. I'll go through phases where I really like to hand write them. And then I'll go through phases where I really like to just like have them on my laptop because I'm opening my laptop every single day. So it's kind of easier. Honestly, having it on my computer just because I know that I'm always gonna have my computer, whereas a notepad, I don't know if I'm always gonna have it with me, but it's more satisfying definitely writing it down. So find what works for you, find what you like doing better, find what makes you more productive, writing it on your laptop electronically or doing it um, hand printed and everybody works different so that this is gonna be different for everybody. And also a thing that can really help as well is if you plan your whole month in advance, obviously you're not gonna know what you're gonna be doing every single day of the month, but what you can do is you can just input the most important dates in the month. So if you have a big due date coming up if you have let's say if you're in school and you have a big paper coming up that month make sure to jot that in your calendar right away so that you don't forget and then when you're making your daily to-do lists or your weekly checklist you can refer back to that monthly calendar and see any big events or priorities that need to get done so that you kind of have that all jotted down in there just like your big events big priorities that absolutely have a due date and need to get done because it's so easy to forget if you don't write it down and when you're looking at it in a month format you can really see how many weeks you have until you need to get that done so i would really suggest just jotting down the big things on a monthly basis and then the mini day-to-day -day tasks on a weekly schedule or just a to-do list every day Okay, so another way that helps me stay super productive is setting goals for the month because they kind of hold you accountable. I actually just started doing this this past month and I'm really loving it so far. So basically what I did is I just took some paper and I wrote down for the month what I want to get done during that month. So I wrote down all my goals. What do I want to accomplish? So that during the month, you can kind of hold yourself accountable, look back at those goals, reflect on what you need to do better, what you're doing enough of. So you can really track your progression and see what you've done see the beautiful creations you have made and what you can do to better yourself the next month often we forget how far we've come or we forget how much progress we've made and it's really beneficial looking back on it that way so that you can track it and so that you can be like wow i really did that i accomplished all my goals this month like that's amazing and it's so great and you can reward yourself afterwards and it also helps you stay productive because you're going to look back at the previous month notice how much you've accomplished and it's going to make you motivated to accomplish more that month to do better and hold you accountable. Okay, so the next tip that I have for you guys is to plan out your work time and to plan out your break time. You do not want to overwork yourself. You kind of got to assess that for yourself because everybody is different. Everyone has a different like work capacity that they can work at. So you just have to find what works for you and stick to it. This will come over time, but this is so important to be staying productive because if you do too much, then you're going to burn yourself out. And if you're going to do not enough, then you're just going to feel lazy and fall into that cycle. You have to listen to your body and know when you've done enough work and you feel accomplished, you feel great 
worried about yourself you don't feel too overworked it's very important not to overwork yourself because that is going to lead to a burnout eventually and you do not want to do that if you work from home like what I personally like to do is for example if I work for an hour I'll take like a little five minute break to go on my phone or get a snack or do whatever and I feel like that's what works for me is every hour kind of rewarding myself for a little bit of five minutes sometimes I will work a couple hours at a time or a few hours at a time but it just depends how I'm feeling that day how many things I need to get done so I just take it day by day but yeah just make sure that you're planning your work time and your break time and what works for you and that will keep you on a productive projection going up this is so important the next tip that I have for you guys is limit your distractions in your workplace so this is more if you work from home or if you are doing like schoolwork or whatever if I am working downstairs and I'm in the main floor and I'm in front of the TV I'll tell you it's a lot harder to work because my phone is right next to me the TV is on the wall playing something and it's so distracting and it's so important to get into that workflow to be productive to have your 100% focus on it so you can get it done the most efficiently so that's why limiting distractions is so important a good way to do this is if you have a quiet room in your house have that space as a designated work area so that you can leave your phone maybe even outside of the room go and work so that you know that when you're in that room you got to work and having kind of a designated spot for something is so important for example your bed you know that your bed is for sleeping so every time you go in your bed you're gonna get tired you're gonna want to fall asleep it's the same thing that goes for working if you have a designated work area your body is gonna get used to that and it's gonna know okay I have to focus now this is my work area so you do not want to be working in your bed because then your mind and body is gonna get so confused like okay am I sleeping or am I working in here so I find it so important to separate those two things and have a designated space for your work and have a designated space for other things just because it is so easy to get distracted when there's so many things around you and you're not in the proper work environment so your environment has so much to do with your productivity and what you're going to be able to get done that day if you do not have the luxury to go into a quiet space in your home you can always put on like noise canceling headphones so that at least you're not going to be hearing too many distractions around you and maybe just turn off your phone so the next step that i have for you guys is get a routine going now obviously everyone's going to have a different routine and what works best for them and i can't stress that enough because sometimes we'll see on social media morning routine and they're going to the gym they're making a healthy smoothie they're going on a walk and it's like whoa but if that doesn't feel good for you if you don't want do not want to do that do not compare yourself to them because you got to find a routine that makes you feel the best so maybe that makes them feel the best but that may not make you feel the best so make sure that you find a routine that is gonna set up your day especially in the morning it's so important that you're fueling your body you're fueling your mind for the rest of the day so if that means waking up meditating for a bit having a coffee and then getting to work or if that means waking up going to the gym making a healthy smoothie it's whatever works for you and whatever is gonna set your body and your mind up to have the most productive day you will learn this through trial and error if you want to try going to the gym in the morning but you don't like it then that's okay because you learn that your body does not like going to the gym in the morning everybody's different and you just have to find what works for you but having a routine is going to kind of set your body up in a productive cycle your body is going to know that routine and it's going to be like okay we're getting ready for work now like it's going to kind of give you that ammo to feed on for the rest of the day i find like when i do my morning meditation when i go on my morning walks it really really does set my body up for a productive day because my headspace is clear i got a little bit of exercise in and it just makes me feel better it makes my energy last throughout the day so yeah if you guys get it in a good routine that your body loves that you've made for yourself then your body's gonna thank you for it your body's gonna love you for it and I feel like it will definitely put you on a more productive path so my next tip is to have a consistent sleep schedule now this you guys is so important because you don't want to be going to bed at 8 p.m. one day and, and then go to bed at 2 p.m. the next day when you want to accomplish the same amount of goals on those two days like that's just not gonna work you have to find what the sweet spot in your sleep is so oversleeping can make you also too tired on your working days or you want to be productive trying to go to bed at the same time every day waking up at the same time so that your body knows and gets used to that and then you'll have that routine mentality you'll have you get a good sleep schedule in place this is what I was doing at the beginning of the year where I was waking up super early on the weekdays when I needed to work but then on the weekends I would sleep in way past my time that I would wake up on the weekdays and then it would just kind of mess up my sleep schedule for the upcoming week 
So what I would suggest to you guys is don't go to bed on the weekends drastically later than you do on the weekdays just because that could hinder your sleep pattern and your sleep schedules. But that's what I found for myself, so it might be different for you. So obviously you still have to do what works for your body best. But that, that was just a problem with me is that I was just going to bed too late on the weekends, waking up too late, and then it kind of put me in a hole for the beginning of the next upcoming week. So I realized that I can't have too much of a differentiation between when I go to bed on the weekdays Days versus when I go to bed on the weekend so that really helped me get things in place and now when I wake up in the mornings I wake up at around 7 38 and I'm not tired at all like I'll like get out of bed and I'm completely fine whereas before I would be so groggy and tired waking up okay so the next tip that I have for you guys is breaking up your bigger tasks into smaller tasks so for an example making a YouTube video can seem like super daunting like oh my god I have to film I should do this like it's so much that goes into it but breaking that up into smaller tasks focus Focusing on the smaller tasks rather than focusing on the huge tasks that can seem very daunting and overwhelming helps so much. So for example, what I would do making a YouTube video is I would write down in my calendar, okay, we're gonna film Monday, we're gonna edit Tuesday, we're gonna upload Wednesday. So just split it up into smaller tasks so that when you look at it, it's not as daunting and you have more energy to get it done. So if you're writing a paper for school, you can be like, okay, I'm gonna work one hour on Monday, I'm gonna work one hour on Tuesday, I'm gonna work one hour on Wednesday, kind of breaking it up into smaller portions rather than having to tackle it all at once. It just makes it seem so much more attainable for your brain, for your body, so that when you look at it, it's not like, oh my God, I have to write a huge paper or oh my God, I have to make a huge YouTube video. It's more of separating it so that you can really just focus on those smaller tasks and it makes you feel less overwhelmed, leading to you being more productive. And trust me, this helps so, so, so much. Okay, the next tip that I have for you guys is just taking things one step at a time. Multitasking does not work for everybody. Multitasking can really extract your focus onto multiple things. So you're gonna give less energy to trying to do too many things at once. I found that focusing my energy on one thing, getting one thing done at a time is so much more beneficial than me trying to do five things at once where my brain power is like spread out to those five things rather than just sitting down focusing and only taking an hour to do something rather than splitting it up and taking like hours to do everything it's just so mentally exhausting for me personally to multitask and i feel like i get work done so much more efficiently if i just sit down and tackle that one thing even when you're having your downtime let's say if you want to watch netflix on your downtime and you're like okay i want to watch netflix but i also need to vacuum the house or do the dishes and then you go and you watch netflix and you're vacuuming and you're doing the dishes then you're not really giving yourself that time to relax because you're also working while having your downtime. So also separating that and not multitasking on your free time is very important for your mental sanity. Having your free time, you should have your free time for yourself to do whatever you want and not feel the need to accomplish anything or multitask with something that's productive. Okay, so the last tip that I have for you guys is super important and it's something that I need to do a little bit more of and that is surrounding yourself with motivation. So what do you do when you wake up? Do you scroll mindlessly on Instagram? looking at random pictures? Do you go on TikTok looking at random videos? Or do you wake up listen to morning affirmation, listening to motivating words, a motivating podcast, maybe motivating YouTube video, reading a few pages of a motivating book. I think that screams the difference in how your day is going to turn out and what your productivity is going to be like throughout the day. Because I feel like motivating yourself at the beginning of the day, especially, it's just so important and throughout the day as well. Just surrounding yourself with that motivation, especially at the beginning of the day, is really going to set up your day for success because instead of mindlessly scrolling through your social media apps that are not really Really doing anything for you you can be scrolling through a motivational instagram page or listening to a motivational youtube video i love listening to some podcasts even when i'm like driving to the gym in the morning it just really fires me up for the day it just makes me think like you know what i can accomplish that i can do that i'm gonna give this day my 100 percent. i promise you it'll help your mindset and your mindset is so important carrying that motivation throughout every single day of your life is so important i used to do this in the past where i would read like a motivational book listen to a motivational podcast and then I wouldn't listen to anything motivational for the following a couple weeks or the following month and then I would lose that drive and that motivation I found that it's so important to keep up with that to keep up with that in your everyday life to include that inside your routine because I promise you it makes the world of a difference in the long run of keeping that motivation running every single day for you and it's going to have a huge effect on your productivity and what you're gonna get done so yeah that was all my tips that I have for you guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe 
trip and just know that if you're in a rut right now you could turn that around you could be productive i believe in you if no one else does i promise you you can do it just set your mind to it and you can do anything you can do anything you set your mind to you guys are so powerful and you just have to realize that i love you guys so 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 much thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video peace out bye